David Krugler is a professor at the University of Wisconsin in Platteville and Cold War historian. He is exploring a nearly untouched fallout shelter from the 1960s in the sub basement of the Oyster Adams Middle School in northwest Washington, D.C. Thank you very much. No wow. This is a sight you don't see often, not in the year 2017. This is enormous. And for all of this to have remained over the decades, it's quite extraordinary. We're following breaking news this morning that North Korea has fired an unidentified ballistic missile. They will be met with fire and fury. Could this kind of missile now reach cities on the East Coast? With tensions running high over North Korea and the world caught up in another nuclear shouting match, this shelter opens a window to another time when the country was gearing for an unwinnable war and looked to burrow underground. Around me, are dozens and dozens of 17 and a half gallon water drums that were put down here in the early 1960s. There are boxes and boxes of so-called survival rations, biscuits, all this to help people survive nuclear war if the Cold War got hot with the Soviet Union. One day, these facts may save you time. What is this fallout anyhow? Cold War was at a pretty tense moment in 1961. The Soviet Union orders a wall built around East Berlin, the Soviet sector of the former capital of Germany. With that in mind, Kennedy goes on TV and, and speaks on radio as well. And he tells people, we've got to be ready for a nuclear war. We don't want one, but that possibility has existed for a while, and we have to think about how we might prepare ourselves. Tomorrow, I am requesting of the Congress new funds for the following immediate objectives to identify and mark space in existing structures, public and private, that could be used for fallout shelters in case of attack. Alex Wallerstein is a nuclear historian from the Stevens Institute of Technology. So this is where things shift into fallout shelters. The idea was that you could spend a few days uh, maybe as much as two weeks, and in that time, the amount of radiation that had fallen onto your area, it'll be decaying, and it puts you into the category of if it's uh, if your shelter is good enough and you stay in it correctly, you become a preventable casualty. The Adams School was designated as a fallout shelter in 1963, and the basement quickly filled with boxes of civil defense rations, drums of water, and medical supplies. But the nuclear threat of the 1960s was severe. Intercontinental ballistic missiles and long-range bombers could rain down hell in a matter of hours and even minutes. All of these preparations, I believe, would have been utterly destroyed if there was a nuclear war with the Soviet Union and Washington was targeted. Anyone within a few miles of the center of a nuclear blast would most likely die instantly from the fire, radiation, or blast wave, but not fallout. The totality of a nuclear war would result in so much destruction that the likelihood of survival was, was pretty low. Man, they really did plan for a lot of people to be down here. But this will not protect us from a missile. This will only protect you from radioactive fallout. We asked Frank Blazich, a Smithsonian curator, to take a look at the Adam Shelter and give a sense of what two weeks in this basement would have felt like. I'd give you a fallout shelter toilet. So you have a nice card sock lid, again, 17 and a half gallons, same size as the water barrels. We have our plastic liner, our seat, and there you go. You can imagine the privacy of being down in this shelter, and this is what you're provided. Now, I think it was one of these for every 50 people. Nobody wanted to be down here. Nobody hoped that they'd have to come down here. These have water in them. So, that is some very old, nasty water. Each barrel here calculate five people per barrel, so we're easily looking at uh, several hundred people crammed down here for two weeks. Uh, it defies, defies imagination and it certainly encourages a movement to a non-nuclear world as opposed to a nuclear world, to say the least. You need to know about fallout. Yes, this does mean you. One day, these facts may save your life. It's really easy for us now to look back at these preparations and laugh at these people and say, boy, did they think this would really work? Nuclear war is not something individuals can manage or overcome or respond to. So often the default position is, and, and you do see civil defense officials saying this, something 
is better than nothing. Today, most of the shelters have been emptied and the supplies long gone. But the signs of the decades-old hysteria remain, and one question persists. What did the fallout shelter program teach us about nuclear war? Now, in the thermonuclear age, any misjudgment on either side about the intentions of the other could rain more devastation in several hours than has been wrought in all the wars of human history. The Cold War Civil Defense Program was not an ambiguous success at all. It did get people to think about these issues in a deeper way than they do now and, and uh, take them seriously. But in a sense, it invalidated itself by being so untrustworthy. They could hit most of the United States, so they finally done it. In the current political environment where we're seeing a return to nuclear proliferation, uh, it raises serious concerns about well, what if they're used? How will we respond? South Korea responded tonight by conducting their own missile exercises. As I said, they will be met with fire, fury, and frankly, power. During the height of the Cold War, this is how we felt we can respond. This is the best we can come up with. We're gonna have crackers, we're gonna have water, and two weeks underground. And after those two weeks, then what? Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. We will have no choice but to totally destroy North Korea. I think the basic lesson of the Cold War when it comes to what can be done to protect us from nuclear weapons is pretty simple and start to state almost nothing. The best thing that can be done to protect us is not to let them be used.